listening to The Lovish Podcast, and I'm your host, Sita Hood, a licensed clinical social worker. Each week, I'm going to help you to develop the belief and strategy necessary to make an immediate impact on the world by deep diving into topics like mental wellness, faith, relationships, and love. I should mention before we hop into the show, this is not a substitute for a relationship with a licensed therapist. You ready? Let's get it. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back for another episode of the Lovish Podcast. This is another video podcast. So if you are listening to the show on your favorite listening app, please head on over to YouTube and check out the video episode for this podcast. Well, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, hey, how are you doing? I always count it a privilege and an honor to have people on the show with me. And as you see, we are blessed with another beautiful guest here. This is my girl. You know, I'm going to pause this intro really quick. We always talk about all the things before the show, but I always forget to ask people like, do you want me to say your government name on these podcast streets? (laughs) (laughs) At this point... It's kind of, it is what it is, but if you want to put my government out there, I feel like the people already know. <laughs> okay, so this is my girl. This is Charnel. This is, I, I know her as Ashley out of these streets. It's going to be hard for me to be like, yeah, hey, Charnel, so tell us what you think, <laughs> but it's okay. This is my girl. I grew up with her. Um, we had some rocky stuff in our relationship throughout those teen years. Y'all know how finicky teenage girls be. (laughs) But I think through it all, even in the midst of our little tips, we remained friends. And this is somebody that is really special to me. Uh, Just grew up, in my opinion, to be a beautiful young woman. And I am more than happy just to have her on the show. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let you say hello to the people. Yes. Okay. (laughs) You better hype me up out here. First off, you're talking about, (laughs) we started off rocky. Like, I don't talk about that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, it really was the middle. Because I feel like when we was younger, it was all that. But you know, them little high school years, it was just. Them little high school years, they were interesting, but we had to find ourselves. And And it wasn't even like a huge rocky thing. No, it wasn't. Literally petty stuff. Like, I mean. (laughs) I can't even recall anything, though. Like, that's the crazy thing about it. It was just. I don't know. I feel like life more than anything. You're right. You're right. I think the reason that I said that is because, you know, we ran with other folks. And I feel like at one point, because the other folks was into it, we was kind of like, pick your side. See, okay. Yeah. That is one thing about group dynamics where it can cause a rift in everything. So, okay. <laughs> that I definitely agree. It was interesting <laughs> to say. Right. That. right. So I feel like, you know, we got caught up in the whole pick or something. Side, pick a side type of thing but I, I don't really remember any major things like that either you know but also this is a show about authenticity and we got to talk about those girl dynamics right we definitely <laughs> do we definitely do and there's a lot to uncover there so. right okay so before we jump into the tea because as y'all can see we ready we ready to just rumble right on into it but before we get into that tell the people who you are tell them what you do okay i like long walks on the beach i like the moonlight (laughs) i'm just kidding (laughs) no um so don't you like that though (laughs) i i do i do I actually really do. <laughs> but no, so you know me as Ashley. Other people know me as Chanel. So all the same, Ashley, Chanel, pretty much. Um, I actually can't believe, now that you're asking me about myself, that you just found out today that I was born in L.A. That's a little crazy to me. <laughs> I'm like, really? 
we grew up together. <laughs> I know. I'm like, how, how did, did you I never know, that? know this? I don't, I mean, I guess it's like it never came up. Like I just, in my little brain, assumed that everybody that was around me was from Chi-Town, period. I mean, what else is there? <laughs> and now that you figured out that I'm from LA, but grew up in <laughs> Chicago. Um, so yeah, Army veteran, psych background, HR professional. Cool. Um Girl, I'm really just like out here trying to just navigate through life, essentially. Like well, one, it. thank you for your service. Like, I never want to take that lightly because I feel like as a civilian, as somebody who's been a lifelong civilian, my brain just has like no clue what goes into that lifestyle. And so mm -hmm. thank you, first and foremost. <laughs> So thanks for your support. It's actually kind of crazy because like I don't typically lead with that. Like a lot of people, if they haven't known me over the years, they really have no idea that I actually served in the military. And it's like, yeah, yeah. No. I was actually in the military for like over 10 years. Like I was I was in for quite some time. But you were. Yeah. <laughs> you were definitely in. Um and then I think the other piece that is so dope, you said that you have a psych background and you work at HR. Like mm -hmm. that's pretty relevant. I don't, I don't, I feel like we don't see that very often, but that's, that's good. <laughs> so there's actually like a whole field, like an aspect of psychology that's kind of designated for the HR field. Wow. Um, so it's like industrial and organizational psychology. So it's all for like, company change, organizational change, performance management. It's like huge, broad spectrum of things that we actually need within these different organizations. And um, yeah, it's a very interesting field to say the least. I like it. I like it. But I'm trying to get to a point where like I can inflict change. Like I want to get into like policy and stuff like that. So that's literally my goal right now. Come on and educate me, girl. Yes. Uh, okay. I love that. So without further ado, again, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you are so welcome. I was like, I, I want to just tell the people like how we ended up here mm -hmm. before we jump into this hot tea, because I already know the tea is piping, right? Um, so Ashley and I have these conversations occasionally where we like, yo, what's up, girl? What you doing? You know, I, again, this is one of my friends. Y'all, so I can't let y'all in on all our inner jokes and all of that. You could just, you know, kind of pull back the curtain a little <laughs> bit. But um, in. No, they can know a little bit, but not too much. Not I too, know. too much. <laughs> right. Like CCC, that's. We're not. We We're not. Can't really <laughs> We're not. We cannot say anything about CCC on here. <laughs> we can release yeasty though. <laughs> it is along the lines of yeast. I am still trying to figure out where we came up with that. I know. I'm gonna let you tell that story though. <laughs> a little bit later, because I feel like I barely remembered it, and you brought it up. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> So um, we were having this conversation, what was it, like a week ago, two weeks ago, and we were talking about relationships and the value of relationships and how amazing it is that we are still connected after all of these years and how, like, that really is a privilege. So, you know, that's kind of where this conversation came from. And we were having such a good conversation that I was like, yo, I got to bring you on a podcast. We got to talk about this because I feel like a lot of the things that we're talking about and navigating through, um, we, we don't talk about, mm -hmm. like even going back to girl groups, female groups, friendships, like how do you get through that? Because there's a lot of girl groups that were collective as friends. And then something happens. It's like, okay, does she expect me not to talk to her? Like, what's going on? You know, so that type of thing. So first question, what does it mean to you to nourish a relationship? Ooh. All right. So I'm actually really glad that you brought me on here because like this is a topic that um, is very dear to me. Um, to nourish a relationship is to promote a healthy environment for growth. Mm. Um, so it's like with all parties, whether it's romantic, whether it's friendly, 
It's just basically, you know, um, aligning yourself with the person that you're dealing with, understanding them for who they are and creating an environment in a space where you both can grow in your authenticity. Authentic. I can never get this word out. <laughs> authenticity. <laughs> yes. It never comes out. It never comes out. But yes, okay, you, we know what you, mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth every time is like, no, girl, we're not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I got words like that too. I, I, I we not go ahead. I don't want to. <laughs> But yes, essentially, that's just what it is. Just creating a space, a safe space where you can really know somebody in their true nature and promote promote a healthy environment for them to grow. I love that. I love that. I love that. Ooh, and see, I feel like, yes, I gave you questions to guide this discussion. But like also, though, in line with that. I want to ask a sidebar question or kind of just open this discussion like mm -hmm. what if it causes a sacrifice of your own personality and your own comfort to create that space for them to grow. Then what? Oh, okay. So this is in my opinion, what it boils down to. Um, we all know what we're comfortable with and we mm -hmm. all like have the ability to set boundaries for ourselves, what we're willing to compromise and what we're willing not to compromise on. Um, so to me, it just really aligns with their value. If it's to a point where it's really like compromising your essence, where you're changing too much of yourself, you're losing yourself essentially, then that's when you have to take a step back and like, is this relationship worth nourishing? Because unfortunately every relationship isn't going to be worth nourishing. Um, some relationships are just here for a period of time to teach you lessons, to help you grow, to help you evolve and move on. Others are here for a lifetime. So it really just boils down to like, okay, you know, am I really compromising myself, my true nature mm. for this? Or is this something where like, I can compromise a piece of it. It's something that's not detrimental to me and my well-being. Mm. And okay, I can move forward because this relationship is that important to me. But I like the way. Not, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> if it's not, it's like that's when you really just have to evaluate the dynamic and the foundation yeah. of the relationship. I really I like liked the way you said that. Like, is it compromising too much of me? But also, another thing that popped into my head when you were talking was how do I know if I'm compromising too much? Like if I'm in a season of like transition and growth and finding out who I am, because I think going back to what we talked about at the beginning of the show, that is likely where you and I were, where it's like, okay, we don't remember having these big incidents where we were at each other, anything like that. But all of us in that friend group were in a growth period and in a time where we didn't know who we were we were learning who we were so how like okay i'll give you an example for me when i when i used to be in high school if i was mad at somebody i expected my sister to be mad at them too my friends to be mad at them too you know what i'm saying and so i'm like if i'm in a, a period of growth like that how would I know, you know, like, how would I know where I'm compromising too much of me versus in that situation? I just needed to grow up and realize mm -hmm. that, no, nah, girl, they don't got to be mad. <laughs> you know, it's so funny you say that because some people still have that mentality to this day. And it's like, I don't mess with this person. So you don't need to mess with that person. And well, it's like, that person didn't do nothing to me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. So no, when it comes to, okay, first and foremost, like how you said, like back in the day, it's still periods of growth. At the end of the day, like as yeah. humans, we're going to evolve. It's going to be periods of growth. It's never ending. Like this is something that we're going to deal with Thanks. for life. Um, so to me, it just really boils down to like sometimes, you know, you do have to take a step back from the relationship to evaluate your mm. stance to say that, is this an area in my life that I just need to grow in? Or is this something you know, the relationship as a whole that's just affected me. So sometimes you do have periods where you do have to take a step back and you have to evaluate it. But when I say like compromising too much of yourself, I don't know, like if you've ever had periods, but like I've had periods where I like, I interact with people and like, I feel like depleted. Like yes. I just don't feel like myself. And I come home and I really just sit there and I'm like, 
you know, when you get to that point, you can't recognize who you Ooh. are and your actions are not aligning with what mm. your morals and values typically are. That's what I mean. You're compromising too much of yourself. So Yo. it's like literally like, okay, wait, this isn't stuff that I normally used to do. Like, how did I get mm. here? When did this become my value? Like, I never used to talk about Ooh. stuff like this. Like, I never used to act like this. That's what I mean about like, you're compromising too much of yourself. Girl, listen, I, I hope y'all hear why I had to have her on the show. <laughs> there was so much in that statement, like so much compromising too much of yourself. When did this become my values? Come mm -hmm. on, because are we paying attention to our values? No, our values should be the basis of how we act in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Am I in alignment with who I want to be? Come on. Oh, see, huh. yes, that right there. I love how you said that. Am I in alignment? In <laughs> Am I in alignment with the things that's important to me? So, you know, like, you know, like, if this is my characteristics and this is my morals and my values and it's been this since day one, I don't care what's going on in life. Like, yes, they may change a little bit, but they're not going to please like do a whole entire yeah. like change that you don't recognize. Like, it's going right. to be something where it's like. I never cared about this before. Mm. Like this was never something that was important to me and my well-being. And now why is this something that like is all I can think about or something like that? You're adapting to somebody else at the end of the Ooh. day. <laughs> adapting to somebody. Girl, I'm gonna, listen, adapting to somebody else. And we're going to pause right here and have a word from our sponsor for this episode. When are you going to stop pretending like you're superwoman? Yes, I know you believe if you don't do it, it won't get done. Take a deep breath and pause with me for a moment here. You're doing too much. You know it and I know it. Let's stop pretending and get you some relief starting today. Do you set weekly wellness goals? If not, you've got to start. No more leaving yourself last on your to-do list. I want you to download the Confident Bay app and start using the weekly wellness tracker now. It's 100% free to use and it comes with a digital journal to help you process thoughts and feelings on the go. You can even meet a tribe of like-minded women inside of Bay's Digital Cafe. I'm serious. Take off your cape, take a deep breath, and download the app at thepinkemerald.com forward slash app or hit the link in the show notes. Hi. Do you find yourself frequently frustrated, struggling to communicate your emotions to the people around you? Are you finding that you got so much bottled up on the inside of you that you can't really communicate? Do you frequently find yourself frustrated almost as if you want to pull out your hair because nobody seems to understand you? If this is you, I want to invite you to my latest workshop, Journaling for Mental Wellness. Now, I know you are probably overthinking journaling. You're going to say you've tried journaling 50 million times and you can never seem to get the habit to stick. Trust me, I hear you. I want to invite you to this very special workshop because I'm going to teach you all the basics of journaling. We're going to identify your journaling style, your journaling type, and then I'm going to give you a specific plan for plug and play where you can incorporate journaling for your mental wellness into your lifestyle. Now, what would this workshop be if it wasn't full of prompts and thoughts and ideas and journal starting things, right? So I'm going to give you all of those tips, all of those tools inside of this workshop. If you happen to be free June 9th, I would love it if you would join me for this workshop. I'll talk to you soon. How many times people do that all the time, even mm -hmm. culturally, if we look at the culture, you adapt to some standards that you never even intended to be yours. But even something else that you said, that's hot tea. You said, if you leave that person's presence and you find yourself depleted, we need to pay attention to that because I don't know if you remember a conversation I had with you when I said, you know, 
I I talked to some people before and I was so drained mm -hmm. after the conversation that it made me want to change my number. That's how much I felt just like sucked dry from that interaction. Mm -hmm. And you're right. That is a major sign for, okay, this is a relationship I need to reevaluate. So I, I've said it many times before on the uh, podcast, like I don't necessarily subscribe to cut off culture, like instant cut off, whatever. But I do feel like you need to evaluate whether you can have that same level of interaction, mm -hmm. whether it's a once a year, hello, at, when I see you at an event or whether you're privileged enough to have my phone number. Cause that's see, the thing. See that I, First off, I love that the whole like I don't subscribe to the whole cancel culture because like now it's so prevalent where people like you don't align with me and this and the third like I'm cutting you off just because somebody doesn't align with their values doesn't mean that you necessarily have to cut off every single person. It's really just a matter of like if a relationship is important to you and you feel it's worth salvaging. Sometimes you have to learn the person and you have yes. to learn how to treat them accordingly. That's mm. beneficial to you. So putting them in a space that's not detrimental to you, where it's not like you're giving too much of yourself or you're conforming to them, but mm. also like, I love you enough to see you for who you are. And while that doesn't align with me, I'm going to interact like how you say it, like, we'll see each other or speak once a year or we'll have these periods where we do this, but I'm going to set boundaries and I'm mm -hmm. not going to let you cross those boundaries because I see things for what they are. And this is what I need to do so I can live in a healthy environment. Yes. Like, I and I that. feel, yeah, I feel like that's part of, it always comes up for me and you specifically in our conversations. We'd be like, you know what, girl, we so different, but there are so many similarities that we have and, mm -hmm what I think is most helpful in our relationship is the level of respect that we have for one another. Absolutely. Like is not just, you know, yeah. Okay. We grew up in very similar, well, a similar religious background and even, you know, cultural background in terms of like South side of Chicago type of thing, but still our experiences were distinctly different. Mm -hmm. And even though we have overlaps of like, you know, family dynamics, friend dynamics, work dynamics, there's still a lot that makes us so different, but it's the respect. So I have another question. Should you nourish a relationship where the trust has been broken? Honestly, it really boils down to if both parties, if you're in a relationship intimate, friendly, whatever it be in nature. If both parties have come to agreements where it's this relationship is worth us trying to mend it, then the need to nourish does not cease to exist. Mm. This is something like if you're making a conscious decision to say, I want to put my foot, my best foot forward, then yes, absolutely. Like you have to continue to nourish the relationship. And also like putting in a solid effort to nourish a relationship is Okay, like not only is my, I'm verbally telling you that I want to mend this, the trust because it's broken, but yeah. that action is going to speak for itself because it's like, I'm doing what I can to promote a healthy environment because I don't want to put us in a situation where the trust can be broken again. Mm -hmm. See, I love that, but I also feel like not enough people view it like that mm -hmm. to where it's like, I'm going to, cause so, okay. A lot of what you're talking about and a lot of what I talk about on the show is self-evaluation, mm -hmm. self-awareness. And I promise you, I tell people all the time, most people are not as self-aware as they think they are. Now I know that obviously because I'm a therapist, but also research actually shows that only like 13% of the people that are like, I'm self-aware are actually self-aware. And and that's not even to say like, oh, yeah, I'm self-aware. I see everything because, no, I miss the mark. I miss how I could have come across to people um, a lot of times, you mm -hmm. know, and I have to go back and correct that situation. But I feel like a lot of what we're talking about is placing a heavy emphasis on your own growth and being able to reflect on what it's like. Like, what do I show up in the world as? How do I 
make other people feel comfortable? How do I create an environment of growth, trust, et cetera? So if you have people that's not committed, because sometimes there's, well, it's two people in a relationship, whether platonic or romantic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if both parties, like you said, are not committed to that trust, then what do you have? And I'm going to pause right here. All right. Tune in next week for part two of this episode.